Hi, welcome back to Lum's channel. In my previous video, I showed you how to set up your Chinese 40 watt laser with the K40 Whisper, a free open source program from scorchworks.com. In that video, you may have glimpsed some ruler slash registration marks around the cutting bit of my Chinese laser. These registration marks help me align my workpiece to a known location in Inkscape, which in turn aligns a cut onto the cutting bed for a precise engraving without having to do test firings of the laser each time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own registration marks and engrave them onto your own laser. For this exercise, you will need some masking tape. I used white. The laser rule guide SVG file from Thingiverse. Uh, the link is in the description. Some cleaning agent such as Awesome Orange and a commercial degreaser such as Goo Gone. We prepare the cutting bed first by cleaning it. I use my Chinese laser to cut a lot of eighth inch birch wood. This cutting leaves a lot of dark brown tacky cellulose residues on the cutting bed. I recommend using Awesome Orange because it dissolves away this residue surprisingly well. If you have stickers or other adhesive tacky materials such as more masking tape, you will need Goo Gone. As amazing Awesome Orange is, it will not dissolve the tape adhesive. Make sure your cutting bed is clean. Next, home your cutter head. In the home position, you can get an idea how the head will travel left to right across the top and how it will travel from top to bottom across the left. These are the areas onto which you will lay out your masking tape. It might seem that masking tape is a flimsy solution or even temporary. And in fact, these are precisely the reasons why I recommend using masking tape. You will make your registration markings once, use the machine for a while, and sometime in the future, you'll clean and reapply the masking and markings. I am on my fourth set of markings on mine, and you can see how easily things clean up each time. I go ahead and apply the masking tape across the top, just above the cutout on the bed, about 35 centimeters wide, and vertically across to the left, about 22 centimeters high. I also apply a third band of tape across the bottom, as wide as the top band. Open up your Inkscape and load up the laserruleguide.svg file that you downloaded earlier. You can see that I have created blue engraving lines that extend from the printer origin, which is the top left, across the top and down the left, with tick marks set every 10 millimeters. Annotations are provided every 50 millimeters. The template border shown is that of an 8.5 inch by 11 inch US letter paper. If you are a stickler for the A4 paper, you may wish to adjust the bottom line and tick marks to match the portrait height of the A4 paper before proceeding. In any case, the engraving will encompass an 8.5 inch by 11 inch paper and extend 20 millimeters beyond to the right. Now we will open up our K40 Whisperer and load up the laserruleguide.svg. You shouldn't have had to touch this file at all in Inkscape unless you wanted to customize it. The file would simply open and show in the preview pane. Don't worry that the markings extend beyond the white areas of the preview pane. The cutting head will go beyond them just fine. Since the lines are all blue, we see that we will perform an engraving operation. Set your printer to 8% power, something just above the turn on point for the laser tube. I find that settings below 7% doesn't fire the tube properly, so 8% is just above the bare minimum for the tube to come on, but more than sufficient to engrave the masking tape. Now we're ready to engrave. One last check that the masking tape is properly sticking to the cutting bed. Make sure that you've turned down your laser cutter, the water cooling pump, and exhaust fan. Press the initialize laser cutter button on the K40 Whisperer. Then click the vector engrave at 20 millimeters per second. Sit back, enjoy the short montage. It should only take a couple of minutes.
And we're done. The top and left engraved lines are at the physical boundary of the cutter head travel and represents the absolute lines. Here I take a caliper and measure the distance from the left line to the opening. It shows 46.75 millimeters, essentially 47 millimeters, and 17.15 millimeters from the top line to the opening. This is significant to remember. Write your own measurements on a sticky paper and post it somewhere convenient. In Inkscape, if you ensure that your drawing or figure is offset from the top left corner by 48 millimeters to the right and 18 millimeters down, you will always place your cutter head within the bed opening. When you cut objects through, your piece would suffer less smoke damage where there is no backing in place of the cut. And you can align your pieces precisely within this open area. Shown here is a piece of 8th inch birch wood from which I've previously cut pieces for a Dimaxium globe I made. I will show in another video how to send jobs to the K40 Whisper such that you can get these precise and close together cuts. Once you have precise lines, you can go on to construct amazing builds that you can get from Thingiverse and other maker sharing sites. For optimal performance, clean and re-engrave your registration markings, perhaps once every two or three months or as needs arise. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe. This is Lum Kichi, and I'll catch you in the next video.